Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. If you're new to the channel, me and my husband live on about 18 acres in the foothills of North Carolina and grow about 80% of our own food. Today's video, we're gonna talk to y'all about these raised beds here. Are they really worth it? You know, worth the time and the effort it takes to build them? And just our take on it, uh, as a family that's always done in-ground gardening, we're gonna let you know what we think. show y'all this real quick this is growing along the side of our raised bed if you don't know what this is it's called lamb's quarter it's totally edible tastes kind of like spinach actually a little better for you than spinach you got some of that growing around your place and it ain't been sprayed try it it's good for you There's that. so y'all i was just replacing a couple of uh these Kentucky Wonder beans here that that they came up, but they uh, ended up getting eat up with some bugs. I don't know. This is the only bed right here that we're having trouble with bugs in, and uh, I don't think it's got anything to do with it. But it's also mulched with leaves, and I don't think that's got anything to do with the bugs. But at the same time, it might. But neither channel we talked about this last summer, but we tried a new green bean variety. We've always planted jade bush beans. Tried these Kentucky Wonders and we ain't going back, y'all. Yeah, we got these. They right are here. delicious. These are, they were all planted at the same time. And look at how these right here, I mean, these look. They coming on. Yeah, they look amazing. And y'all, <coughs> we're pretty proud of this, but most of this is our own compost, right? Is that right, Andy? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, we com we made the compost that's in these uh, beds. If you want to know how to make your own 18 day compost, I'll link that video to this one of how we made most of this but it's really well these plants really like it they do um but i can tell you right now that the store-bought stuff the store-bought compost we used was actually some that i had left over from a little job we done and uh, i brought it home and dumped it off here and the stuff that's planted in the store-bought compost ain't doing near as good as the stuff that's not planted in the store-bought compost so right here in this little area we have eight raised beds that all measure roughly what these are four by eight four foot by eight foot then this one right here honestly i don't know how big <laughs> we just kind of winged that one <laughs> yeah that was our first one yeah. it's about if i had to guess i'd say seven or eight foot by six foot or something like that but you folks that live on a small area um that may be feeling discouraged about growing your own food don't think you've got to have a big spot. You know, when we kind of found this out ourselves, because we've always planted a big open garden. Now, of course, we don't have uh, our corn and October beans, things like that planted out here. They are planted in the bigger garden and we don't have any tomatoes in this area. But I'm just gonna show y'all just how much food you can grow in a real small spot. And we could probably squeeze a few more in this area too. Here we have uh some beautiful onions these look a lot better than the last video i showed y'all with them crazy onions these were planted at the same time as the crazy onions but they're doing really good um i've got some volunteer deal coming up all up in here so i'm just gonna let that do its thing i'll use that got lettuce here i'm the only one in this house that eats lettuce but uh the cows seem to like it and the chickens in this bed here We've got, these are the volunteer fingerling potatoes we dug up out of our big garden. They are really liking this raised bed. So we've got some potatoes. These are Andy's sweet potato slips that he's growing all the way across there. So we just kind of stuck some sweet potatoes in the edge here and let them do their thing. So we can get the slips off of those. Got the green beans growing along the edge. These are the ones he was talking about. The bugs have really worked on for some reason or another all along the edge because they're gonna grow up these cattle panels. So we're growing vertically as well, because those are runner beans, pole beans. And then the next one, this is a little bed. We didn't actually count this when we were counting it, but this is kind of a makeshift bed. Andy's also got some sweet potatoes in this to start more slips. So y'all, something she just mentioned is something you can really take advantage of. 
in any garden situation, not just raised beds, but raised beds especially, grow vertically and down here on the ground because as you can see, I mean, we're just using the very edge of the bed to grow our beans and now all the plants gonna grow up here and we still got all this area right here to grow something else in. If we had this out in like a field type setting in a big open garden, in ground garden, chances are you'd have one set up row with a trellis of some kind on it and have your beans planted by it. And so you're only getting like one crop out of that whole row. Whereas right here, we're getting, well, we've got carrots, beans, peppers, and two random block broccoli plants. Here. You see our carrots there and the peppers and yeah, the two random broccolis in this one bed and the green beans along the edge. In this bed down here, these are all our broccoli plants. They're really liking this too. We've got, you see here, we planted a few sunflowers, just random. These are volunteer sunflowers too that came up in the garden and we dug them up and replant them different places. That'll attract the bees to our plants. Plus they're pretty. Next bed, we've got, there's another sunflower right there. These are zucchini plants. So, and then we've got some squash coming up here. The store-bought compost is mainly in this bed, this bed, and Jacob's bed may have some of it in it. I can't remember. But anyways, these are the ones that are just not doing like what I thought they should be doing. You know, usually squash opens up and it's a whole lot bigger leaf and they're just looking more vibrant. So we've got some Hoss organic fertilizer here that I'm gonna throw by some of this and our beans down here. These are jade beans. And they just really, the bugs took a whooping on them too. The places you see mist, and they all come up and the bugs just eat them off. Whatever kind of bug it was. But um, I replanted those just now, and so I'm gonna fertilize all this too. Everything else is looking so good in that stuff, you know, and we watch Billy from Permer Pastures Farm and he talks about how you can't get no better compost than what you make on your own place. And I'm really starting to see that. You know, it's 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 evident for sure. But I think that's the whole key to it all is having good compost. Yeah, but to look at the difference here, I mean, I'm gonna come back here so you can kind of see. So I'm gonna point to it. So this is store-bought. The plants are not doing great. Next one's store-bought. All the green up there in the next one, that's our compost in that. And the plants, usually like your brassicas too, get eat up first. And it's like, it's weird they're eating the green beans and not the broccoli plants to me. Well, we haven't, well, also another thing Billy says over at Permer Pasture Farm is that if you have an insect problem, it's usually a soil issue. And I'm, I'm coming to find that true too, because some of our ground that, like in our in-ground garden, if we have a bad insect problem, it's some of the poorest dirt we've got. And so here we are with an insect problem on this store-bought compost. I've never, ever had broccoli grow in our in-ground gardens that we did not have to treat for with insecticides or anything. This has not been sprayed with anything, and there's not the first bug hole in it. And we've only used organic fertilizer in all these beds. Yep. Instead of what, we, we haven't used chemical. Yep. All right, so the next one, this is actually Jacob's garden here. So he's got his green beans. He loves to eat um, the raw baby green beans. So that's why he planted green beans, so he can come out here and pick them and eat them raw. He also has in several cucumber plants because those are his favorite things from the garden, and that's what he wanted to grow this year. So he's taking care of this, and he's doing a great job. This little area here... Andy mulched it for a couple of reasons. One, so when he comes through here with the lawnmower, he can just come straight through. We also, I planted some mint here. What else we got over here? Ain't that a, um, that's a purple cone yeah, flower. So we're just planting some random stuff in this mulch. I mean, it hasn't broken down any, but hopefully in the future, maybe next year, we can plant some more um, annual plants here or either some more herbs. This right here is a, apple tree yeah that's a red delicious apple that, yeah that one was actually one of the first apples we ever planted around here you can see the little apple up there all right so this bed here more volunteer potatoes these potatoes have really started looking good since we moved them got the marigolds in between to also uh help with the bugs 
more Kentucky Wonder Beans that are gonna go up the cattle panels. So I'm gonna give you a little different perspective from up here and kind of look down on it and show y'all, see if you can see it all on how small of a space it is. This is not taking up hardly any room in our yard. This spot is probably, you know, some of you may not know or whatever, but I do landscaping and mowing and stuff. And I do a bunch of work in town, like on the small city lot. And majority of the backyards have plenty of room to be growing just about all the vegetables they could eat. Um, so, that, and I think this is a good example right here of just what we're growing. Of course, we haven't harvested from here yet, but I'm expecting it to be pretty good. At least so far, it's looking really good. And now one other thing I wanna show you while we're over here. If you notice our raised bed is next to one of our chicken coops. Um, now, when I get new hens, I let them grow out in this coop before I move them to the eggmobile. Yeah, Maggie also has a little garden right here. Green peas. These are her green peas. She loves green peas. And they actually look the best out of any green peas we've planted. And I guess because it's right here next to this chicken coop. And she's got a few green beans over here, but well, they're, green beans, they they're, uh, they're struggling, so. <laughs> um, but I also want to show you, we feed our chickens that heirloom corn. When I had chickens in here last, I guess it was last fall, yeah. when they were in here. Look at this corn coming up, and look how healthy it is. Yeah, and we've not done anything to it. It come up by itself. We're just letting it do its thing because yeah. we don't have any chickens in here right now, and we don't plan to anytime soon. So it's growing purely in that compost that's in that under those wood chips. Can okay. you show them the compost? Yeah, we'll dig it up. Here. So we do the deep bedding method. When we, do, when we do have chickens in here now when we uh constructed this we didn't know anything about permaculture and deep bedding so it's not the easiest thing to get in but look under these wood chips guys so what we do is we the bone. we continue to dump wood chips um in here about every other Show week look at all those earthworms there is thousands of earthworms right here and they're in here uh, breaking all this down and turn it into some awesome I'm sure if I dug deeper, it's probably. And if you wonder where the bones come from, they get all the scraps when we're doing our pigs and stuff, so. <laughs> you see some of the white in there? That's your fungal activity going on. That's a big piece of it right there. Good Lord. But that's what you want to see. Yeah, they say you want to see it. Like I said, I'm no expert. So, all I know is this must be some good stuff for that corn to look that good because corn is such a heavy feeder. There is nowhere around here that I could plant a corn seed in the ground without fertilizer and it not and it looked like that. There's no way. It would not even grow without fertilizer. Yep. See how dark green and pretty that is? And that's had nothing on it. It's just growing straight into <laughs> We this. didn't even plant it. <laughs> well, yeah, we didn't even plant it. I'm interested to see, which it'll probably be chicks in there before it actually has time to make anything. But it would be cool to see if we could let it grow out and see what it would do. So something else um, that we like about the raised beds is the weeds are not nearly as bad, I guess because they're full of mulch. Um, and so the weed pressure is nothing like it is in the other garden. Um, and plus, I don't have to bend all the way down to the ground. They're like right here. So it's a lot easier to take care of in my opinion. Like she's talking about with a weed, y'all. Like right there's all you gotta do. And there's really not that many weeds in here. It's nice. I broke my hoe out for the first time yesterday. I hoe our field corn up here. And uh I tell you, I don't miss that thing at all. But uh 
it's just for years everybody's always told us you need to build you some raised beds build raised beds and i just didn't understand how you could have enough food in raised beds to to make it but we got a lot right here just for what little bit we got and so it's i think it's well worth it as a matter of fact there's probably going to be more coming up when you say so Megan, mm -hmm. we may even turn our garden over there into more of raised beds than what it is now but so far we really like them a lot i also like them because they're right here at the house i mean it's just i don't know they're so much easier and you don't realize i mean we started with the one we really liked the one so then we added a couple more last year really like that like i grew we grew enough uh green beans last year that i had a few to can just off of the two cattle panels i think it was just two last year one oh yeah because one of them didn't grow that's right yeah, you put them other yeah i had one kind of green bean i tried to grow called lazy wife bean and it was beautiful plants and no beans so i only had one cattle panel worth of kentucky wonders and had enough to can well this year i'm gonna have one i'm gonna have two more two more three more uh full of beans so i'm hoping i have enough green beans to can plus eat some fresh off of this i mean just off this small area but we really seen how easy they were to care for and so andy decided this winter he was going to build a few more and so i can't wait to show y'all the harvest that we get off of these um and show you that even with a small space you can you can grow your own food you can do it without a tractor you know without a tiller you can do it we also you know have like i showed you a while ago we even got one little fruit tree stuck in here so you can stick you a fruit tree in between them if you want to so i hope i've helped you make up your mind if you up in the air about raised beds or Wondering how you can grow your own food with a small area. I hope, I hope we've helped you a little bit on that. And we appreciate you watching today. And we'll catch you on the next one.